Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone to the organizational meeting for the Bryan City Board of Education. Let's begin with the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll begin this evening with roll call. Rob? Emily Ebal? Here. Cinder Keeler? Here. Tom Lingby? Here. Brian Miller? Here. Glenn Newcomer? Here. Thank you. Okay, first item on the agenda for the organizational meeting is nomination of school board president. The floor is open. Is there a nomination? I'd like to nominate Ryan Miller. Is there a second? No, second. Second by Tom. Please call the roll. Cindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Ryan? Abstain. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. You can vote for yourself, Ryan. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Next, we will take it, accept a nomination for the board vice president for the coming year. I'd like to nominate Emily Ebal as a vice president. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Cindra. Rob, please call the roll. Tom? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Cindra? Yes. Thank you. And with that, I will pass the gavel. And we will now proceed on to swearing in of the president, vice president, and re-elected board members. Rob? Yes, please. <clears throat> you raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as president, vice president, and board members of the Board of Education of the Bryan City School District here in Williams County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in this said office until your successor is elected and qualified. If so, play it, say I will. And I will. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Uh, other items on the agenda, public participation. I'm not aware of any at this time. Uh, recommendations. Um, 2016, Diana, do you want to, do you read these or should I read these? You can read those. Okay. Mm -hmm. 2016 regular board meeting schedule. Uh, at this time, I'm going to recommend that the board uh, establish dates and times for our 2016 meetings. We've historically met on the third Monday of every month. I recommend that we do the same unless I hear any further uh, exceptions to that schedule that we've had. Um, in July, yep. if possible. Um, that is a week that I am unavailable. If we could move to the 11th or the 25th. Rob, do you have a preference based on your work? 11th is fine. Either either or works for me. I would prefer the 11th. I'm not aware of any conflicts. Works for me. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Anything in February, Diana? Or President's Day this year? Or? Um. February is also a day we typically move just due to the President's Day holiday. Um, again, Rob, I would defer to you on your preference for month end if you would prefer the 8th or the 22nd. Uh, the 8th will work fine. I, I, I have no preference. Either way will work fine for me. It's whether it gets too cumbersome for Jane to get the agenda put together. Should be fine. I so, will. so next month it will be February 8th. Well, well whichever works for the board. I won't be in the area on the 8th. Okay. Do we want to do the 22nd? Let's do the 22nd. I think okay. that just gives people more time. Okay. Not a problem. Those are the only two that I'm aware of, Ryan. Okay. Uh, board committee assignments for 2016. Um, I have down uh, for negotiations committee uh, recommending uh, myself and Emily Ebal, Business Advisory Committee, Glenn Newcomer and Tom Lingvi, Facilities, uh, OFCC Commission Committee, uh, Tom Lingvi and Glenn Newcomer, Legislative Liaison Policy, Sandra Keeler, Four County, Sandra Keeler, Wellness Committee, Emily Ebal, OSBA Delegate, Cindra Keeler. 
and Audit Committee Ryan Miller and Glenn Newcomer. Uh, also in the notes is a recommendation that uh, we place a $20,000 position bond or purchase, excuse me, a $20,000 position bond for the board president and the superintendent of schools and establish a service fund for the Board of Education for $9,000 for 2016 for any school board expenses that may be incurred. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we accept the board authorizations for 2016. Glenn moves. Any second? No second. No. Tom? Ryan? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Cindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Uh, 2016 standing authorizations recommend the following. Uh, superintendent as purchasing agent for Bryan City Schools, dispensing the board's requirement to authorize, approve all purchases and payments in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 3313.18. Uh, also authorize superintendent to employ personnel on a temporary basis. Allow superintendent to dispose of obsolete equipment and materials. Provide CFO the authority to request and invest tax money as it becomes available through the county auditor. Authorization for the CFO to make appropriation modifications throughout the year as necessary. Provide CFO the authority to pay all bills in a timely manner. And the CFO, assistant treasurer, superintendent, and administrative assistant to the superintendent as Board of Education representatives for mandatory public records training required by House Bill 9. If no further questions, I'll accept the motion. I'll so move. Tom? Second? I'll second. Sandra? Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion on those items? Any other items not in the agenda? All right, I'll make a request a motion for adjournment. Mm -hmm. Second. Emily? Second by Glenn. Emily? Yes. Cinder? Yes. Tom? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Thank you. Stand adjourned from the organizational meeting. I'll give Rob a second to get caught up. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Fire away. All right, now begins a regular meeting of the uh, Board of Education, January 11, 2016. Uh, I'd like to call the order. I'm going to dispense the Pledge of the Flag since we've just taken that. Uh, if you'd like to call roll. Emily? Here. Sindra. Here. Tom. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Glenn. Here. Thank you. Uh, I believe everyone's had a chance or opportunity to see the December meeting minutes. Any questions, comments? If not, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Glenn. Second. Emily. Sindra. Yes. Tom. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Emily. Yes. Thank you. Again, still not aware of any public participation. None's no. crept up in the last five minutes, so I think we're good there. Uh, so on to communications. Sandra, anything with Fort County? Just a few things to mention. It's fairly quiet getting started back after Christmas break, and now the weather kicks in. Um, there was an open house planned for tonight, but due to the weather and the closing of Fort County, it has been canceled, postponed. I will do my best to update if it falls within parameters of our next meeting, but I can let you know when that is. Um, we did also have our organizational meeting and regular board meeting for January last Thursday, and Dennis Vetter of Hicksville was elected the 2016 president, and Brian Baker from the Fulton County ESC as vice president. Um, the Adult Education Public Safety Program um, has some exciting <coughs> news. They were awarded two EMSs in great condition from the Arrowhead for the Arrowhead facility that um, we um, staff, and they were donated by ProMedica Healthcare System, so that's um, some excitement. And one last thing, Fort County does have a Facebook page, I mentioned it one other time. Um, please um, look it up and like it, and you'll be able to see updates and upcoming events for Fort County Career Center. That's my update. Thanks, Sandra. You're welcome. Thank you. Treasurer's report. Okay, thank you. We'll uh, look at our financial reports for the month end of December 31, a cash reconciliation report at Farmers and Merchants State Banks. 
at State Bank, we maintain a balance of $13,506,776. Our outstanding checks and adjustments totaled $155,895. At Star Ohio, we maintained investments of $3,234,272. At Morgan Stanley, $33,981,030. And at State Bank, $4,009,742. Petty cash and change funds totaled $7,750. Total funds on hand at December 31, $54,583,676. Of those funds, uh, the general fund balance was $11,138,489. Our permanent improvement fund balance, $2,250,552. Our locally funded initiative building fund totaled $3,149,427. The local share of our project fund was $29,473,096. And the state share of our project fund, $7,821,756. Once again, total fund balance at the end of December, $54,583,676. Any questions on those reports? Not the SM2 report for the month of December indicates a positive variance of revenue and expenses totaling $551,623. One item to note, um, there was a change in the payment schedule on our health insurance, uh, which usually takes place at the end of the month. That has been now moved to the fifth of the following month. So in December, there was no health insurance uh, payment recorded. So there, that's about a $200,000 variance. Uh, from this 551,000, so our actual variance is closer to 350,000 dollars instead of 551. I'll try to modify that SM2 reporting and budgeting so we have a better report next month. Any questions regarding that? If not, we'll look at uh, amended appropriations. Our appropriation total stands at 25 million seven hundred and twenty nine thousand three hundred and eighty two dollars. Changes during the month. Uh, addition of $500 to food service, middle school principals fund increase of $5,000. Our district manage activities increased $12,405. Permanent improvement fund increased $8,147. And student activity funds uh, uh, increased $3,036. Total increases $28,588. Any questions on appropriation changes for the month? If not, we'll continue on and we'll recognize some donations that we received during the month. Um, Annette Kubiski donated bowling balls for our high school bowling team valued at $100. The Newland Quest Club donated $500 to be applied to our one-to-one -one laptop program. Also, Newland Quest donated $500 to the high school athletic department. And Soaring Eagle Crafts, uh, care of Doris Nagel, she donated eight sets of hats and gloves for children at the Lincoln Elementary Building. We appreciate all those donations and all the support that we get from our community. Next on my agenda, I'd like to uh, ask for approval of depository agreement with Farmers and Merchants State Bank from the period starting February 28, 2016 through February 28, 2021 for active funds with interest-bearing checking accounts. This will be our normal banking business. Um, bid this out this last fall. And Farmers and Merchants State Bank is the bank that we have banked with for several years. And their uh, quote was, once again, very, very good. And uh, make a, a recommendation to continue that relationship with Farmers and Merchants State Bank. Uh, depository agreements for interim funds. I ask for your approval of depository agreements with Farmers and Merchants State Bank, Huntington Bank, First Financial Bank, State Bank and Trust Company, and First Federal Bank for the period February 28, 2016 to February 28, 2021 for interim funds. Quotes will be taken on an as-needed basis and awarded to the depository with the highest rate of interest. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion. Oh, you have a question? No, Sorry. go ahead. I'm, I'm going to ask for a motion at this time on the recommendations as through that point. So, thank you, Emily. 
Second. Second. Glenn? Tom? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Epstein? Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Cindric? Yes. Thank you. And finally, a uh, recommendation to purchase a nine passenger bus from Cardinal Bus Sales and Service. The bid price was $42,856. This was uh, on the agenda last month to get this bid through Meta purchasing, and uh, we have done so, and the bid came through at $42,856. We'd like to make that recommendation to make that purchase, please. So moved. I'll second. Ryan? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Cindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Thank you. That concludes my report this evening. Thanks, Rob. Uh, under old business, old business, OFCC update. Yes. I have, uh, this is the latest update from Rudolph Libby. This t tracks activities through January 1st of 2016. Uh, temporary heaters have been set up in the gymnasium and building one, which is the academic building, and have been running since December 15th. Uh, the concrete floor, the first pour on the second floor of the academic wing was made on December 22nd. The gym floor was poured on December 23rd. Um, the second story masonry bearing walls were started in the academic wing and were completed on December 29th. What's currently still in progress, the electrical rough-in and work for masonry is continuing. The underground electrical rough-in is complete in the academic building and is finished except for the west locker rooms in the, the athletic area. The locker rooms can are still kind of in a um, holding pattern due to the scaffolding, um, but the building, uh, the music area is 90% done and we still need a little bit to be completed in the student dining. The overhead and metal stud wall electrical started in the week of December 7th. Roofing materials were delivered on December 10th. And at this point, I would say approximately 75% of the roof decking is um, weatherproofed. They were hoping to do the last bit this past weekend. Roofing materials were delivered um, as stated. Um, some of the music area roofing cannot be finished until the masonry and structural steel is complete. We're beginning to start the masonry work in academic area of C, which is the music area, as well as academic area in A, which is the um, academic wing. And you're seeing that inside masonry walls go up. And then additionally, uh, we're hoping for um, a couple of more floor pours to date. And again, this was as of January 1st. Uh, they had completed 31,350 square feet of the second floor. So, Tom, do you have any other updates to share? There's Yeah, there's just uh, one pour left on the second floor, which would complete everything on the academic part of the building. Okay, great. Uh, the, uh, the rest of it is pretty much, as you had indicated, uh, tied to the completion of the masonry work over in the uh, music area, the uh, cafeteria area, and then the... Uh, locker room area. Those would be the remaining ground floors that need to be poured. So, uh, and that's going to be all predicated on completing some masonry work. Yeah. And they are reworking on a new timeline and a new schedule, um, but they felt really good over the past week with the progress that they were able to make. Uh, had a little bit of setback this weekend with weather. Um, some winds, the high winds uh, blew off some of the temporary enclosures that they were working on replacing today. But Overall, I think that they were really happy last week when we met with them. Any other questions about the project or? So, so overall schedule seems to be? They're reworking it a little bit, but overall we're still on track for the same completion date. They're just maybe reworking some of the progression of items. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for OFCC? OFCC? Glenn, you're on the no. set? Okay, report. Uh, new business. Discussion item for 2016-17 school calendar. Yes, I'd like to take a few minutes. This is a little different approach than we've taken previously regarding the school calendar. 
And part of that is because of what we just finished discussing is our construction project. So although um, as of today, January 11th, we're on time and on schedule, we want to be cognizant of the fact that we don't want to uh, put out a calendar that we're going to then have to change due to a construction delay. So there's a new state law that says it went into effect last year that will present calendars to the board for consideration, but the board must have a 30-day window before they vote to approve. So tonight we're just going to discuss the calendars. Um, these are open for discussion. I sent out a survey to all of our staff members today to gather input from them. But I want to share with the board two versions of what we're looking at for next year. So the first version, which we'll term our A calendar, is very similar to a calendar that you see this year. Students and teachers would start mid to late August. They would end school late May, early June. There would be the two parent-teacher conference days and the four teacher work days built into the schedule. There would be a week of time at Thanksgiving break. Because of Christmas and the way it falls on Sunday this year, the Christmas holiday break would be a little shorter than normal. Um, but again, just because of it falling on the weekend, we are able to get more school days in that week. There is a spring break, and then students would end on uh, June 1st, and teachers would end school on June 2nd, barring any weather or um, contingency days. There's a second version of that same calendar without a spring break that has students then ending on May 24th teachers ending on May 25th, which ends school prior to the Memorial Day weekend. So again, just an option open for discussion. The second calendar, which we're terming Calendar B, is probably more in line with our construction timeline. It gives more time for the transition of, of materials and supplies and um, gives us more time to set up the new building. Um, this has students and teachers, teachers reporting for their first day on September 1st, and students not reporting until September 6th. It does still, again, contain the same types of teacher work days and breaks. There's a week of break at Thanksgiving. There's a week of break at Christmas. There's a spring break week, and students would end school on June 9th. Again, that would be a little bit later than we're normally ending now, but because of the late start, that would push us a little bit more into June. The second version of that B calendar starts at the same time, has the same Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, but eliminates spring break week, and then students would be able to finish on June 2nd. So again, we have a couple of options that we're gathering input on. I'll answer any questions that the board has regarding the calendars. All of the calendars have 184 days for the teacher and 178 days for the students. There are weather contingency days built into both calendars. Um, questions that you have or discussion points? Two questions. You have two sure. in-service teacher days before Christmas? No, not before, oh, uh, in total before Christmas, yes. One in October and one in December. Okay, and you still think we need to have a week off for Thanksgiving? Um, the week holiday at, at Thanksgiving is um, essentially comp time because uh, teachers are attending parent-teacher conferences in the evening hours. So the two days of Thanksgiving, the 21st and 22nd, are a trade for those evening hours for parent-teacher conferences. There are some teachers and staff members who have asked if those two days could be transferred to before Christmas. So that's part of our survey to see how everyone feels about that in which they prefer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just thinking that this year may be an exceptional year where we may have to have even more flexibility given the construction that we're having. Mm -hmm. If they went three days Thanksgiving week mm -hmm. and you had those other two in-service days to pick up, you could pick up an entire week before Christmas. And I realize that would be, you're still talking about a September start date, 
but I think we want to have some flexibility in there that we have the ability to either move that a little later or have another plan possibly. I, I know. Um, so are you talking about a mid-year move plan? <clears throat> no, no, I'm just suggesting that we want to make sure that we have the ability if that the, that facility is going to be completed by that date. You mean like if it's not quite ready by September 1st, right. maybe we go September that, 8th and squeeze out saying. that week in Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's what I'm in referring to. Okay. How, how late? Or how late can we go before we have to approve the calendar? We can approve it as late as May, June. All right. um, I don't, I don't I'm know. not looking to approve it anytime soon. Okay. Um, I just wanted to start discussing right. it because mm -hmm. it That's is fine. typically it something sense. we discuss I, at this point. I do think we need to delay as much time yeah. as we can in approving that calendar so we have a clear understanding mm -hmm. of where we uh, are. I, in I would agree with that. Uh, you need to get through all of January and February, mm -hmm. and by then, uh, Rudolph Libby should be able to give us a pretty solid date in terms of expectations of when they'll have the building ready. Uh, As of right, to okay. commit to something, you know, any any anywhere before they say the end of February, early March, I think you know would set ourselves up to having to revise something. Yeah, that is not a problem. But again, with the state law in effect, we wanted to at least open the discussion no, now fine. so that it's we fine. could vote later. I, and no. I think the teachers have to recognize in, in discussing this that, look, at this is still a tentative type schedule and we need to have a few things gain a little more clarity in terms of exactly where we sit on the project and the schedule. We've exactly. shared that with them as well. I think it's important to gain everybody's feedback as to what's important to them though in the calendar. Mm -hmm. Is it important to have a spring break? Is it important for us to have 10 days, two weeks, one week, you know, between Christmas and New Year's and how that has fallen traditionally. Is a week at Thanksgiving, you know, can we flex some time around to make that work? Mm -hmm. um, I think next year is going to be, you know, like everyone said, a challenge. Um, just to make sure we get the, the construction timeline done. I, would, and, and I guess I would it just could say be a little unique, maybe challenge is the right word, but I could would be unique. I would encourage our employees and the public to give us a little latitude in discovering when that time frame is going to be for the mm -hmm. optimum time for us to open because a mid-year move unless something turns up we really don't want to do that because we it's can't not ideal. do that yeah, we can. <laughs> that's what I'm saying we, we cannot do a mid-year move right um, without jeopardizing the renovation of the pre-k to 5 building we have a lot on the work schedule and I just think we need to have that flexibility at the in in that first half or before Christmas before we we commit Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. Not asking you to approve it tonight. Just wanted to open the discussion and give the board an opportunity to ask questions or to provide any um, clarification that the board might need. <coughs> when we do vote, um, I will bring back the input that I've gathered from the staff and any community members that have shared with me and I will present that to the board prior to making a final recommendation. Um, bottom line though it's still going to be a board decision regardless. it's always a board decision <laughs> it's always a board decision thank you but we do gather well, that input I say I think it's important to gather all the input and make the best decision so yep I agree all right okay. thank you Diana thank um, you administrative recommendations superintendent's report um, yes, first of all, we'd like to set the 2016 high school summer school rates at $100 per course. Courses that will be offered this summer include high school physical education and high school oral communications. One side note on summer school is uh, Mr. Rary and his team have been looking at this. Um, this is an option that may or may not continue in the long term plan of within the world of online classes, flex credit, uh, different opportunities that we're looking at at, at achieving credits in the eighth grade. Um, this may or may not be an option that continues, but it will continue for 2016. And so we'd like to get board approval for those tuition rates. Okay. Uh, I'm going to accept the motion if there's no other questions. Uh, so moved. Tom? Second. Glenn? Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Ryan? Yes. 
Under commendations, we'd like to first of all recognize um, the school board for your time, your dedication, your service to the community. Um, it is an honor to serve this community with you and we appreciate all that you do. Um, many don't realize the extra time you put in between meetings, um, getting information, uh, working within the community to gather input. So on behalf of the community, on behalf of the staff and students of Bryan City Schools, we'd like to present you with a certificate to recognize that it is School Board Appreciation Month. Thank you for Thank you. all you do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, they're sticking together here, Tom. There you go. Glenn, thank you. Ryan, thank you. And Syndra, thank, thank you, you very much. Oh, that's pretty spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Under student commendations, we'd like to honor our BGSU High School Honor Band participants, our girls bowling game and series new school record to Danica Hickey, our students of action and our Kiwanis Students of the Month, Jacob Kuba and Dalen Miley. At our middle school, we're proud to announce, and I'm sure the administrators will touch on this a little bit, that we set another record for our district with a donation of $6,715.46 plus 60 additional toys to the Mix 98.1 Christmas for Kids campaign for the students of Williams County. Students of action at the middle school, as long as we'd like to recognize Ike's top dogs for our character trait of gratitude. At Lincoln and Washington Elementary, we'd like to recognize our students for their character trait of gratitude as well as recognize the character and sportsmanship contest classroom, Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Walker at Lincoln, the PE Gold Slip winner, Kenna Kaufman, the PE Gold Slip winner at Washington, Anthony Kaiser, Kinzer and Aaliyah Schilling, and the character bear classroom, Mrs. Schilling's first grade classroom. And those are our accommodations, and I expect you to vote for yourself, even though your accommodation <laughs> is listed. <laughs> So move to accept that recommendation, that commendation. Emily? Have a second? No, I'll second it. Tom? Emily? Yes. Sindrip? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Thank you. Under personnel recommendations, we would like to accept with regrets resignation for the purpose of retirement of Vicki Rathbun. She's currently a grade three classroom teacher, and that will be effective May 31st of 2016. We certainly appreciate all of the years of service that Vicki has given to our district and will miss her greatly um, in the years to come. Higher classified personnel, I'd like to recommend Michael Berlin, second shift Lincoln custodian, zero years experience, four hours per day for approximately 145 days, and that was effective January 4th. And Gary Blank, second shift middle school custodian, zero years experience, eight hours a day, 260 days per year, and that will be effective January 19th. Substitutes, I'm happy to report that we've seen a little bit of growth in our substitute uh, list since our last meeting, and I've also received some very personal and heartfelt um, letters of gratitude and, and personal thank yous for the board approving the substitute pay increase last month. So. On behalf of them, I want to share that with the board as well. But we do have some classified and teacher substitute um, additions to be approved this month. Also recommend the personal recommendations. Second. Sandra, with the motion, Glenn with the second. Sandra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. And finally, last month we had the first reading. This month we'll need the approval unless there are questions or concerns with our board policy updates. These are recommended quarterly by NEOLA and they help us stay in tune with the current law changes and expectations from ODE. Questions? Accept the motion. So moved. Tom? Second. Emily with the second. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Cinder? Yes. Thank you. 
And then finally, uh, just an update in chat. I hope I'm not stealing your thunder, but they are going to release the first wave of the state report card this Thursday. They're going to release our graduation rates with a graded rating. Um, our graded rating is projected to be an A in this area. We excel at our graduation rate, both the four-year and the five-year rate. Um, they're also expected to release the third grade guarantee mark. Um, at currently, we're at a B rating in that um, area. And then finally, they're expected to release the percentages. This will not be graded for Ready for Success. Um, this looks at your college prep career readiness measures. <coughs> and like I said, that will not be graded at this time. Um, it'll be just listed in percentages. The second half of the grade card, which is our testing results, for our students in grades 3 through 12 will be released sometime in March, February or March. So stay tuned for that. Um, Mrs. Whistler and uh, the staff are working <coughs> hard to make sure our data is correct and up to date. And so those are our projections at this time for that release this Thursday. Questions on that? Okay, hey, our regular February board meeting then has been established for February 22nd. I still need to check on the business advisory committee and I'll get those dates to the new committee members this week. And LPDC committee will meet on February 4th, 2016. And we will turn it over to our administrative report starting with Mr. Roofer. Uh, just a kind of quick rundown on winter sports so far. Um, wrestling, uh, they've been off to a little bit of a rocky start. Uh, some, some injuries, some kids, uh, um, grades and things like that. Um, they've been out here quite a bit, putting in a lot of time. Uh, kind of had a tough one this weekend where they went to Perrysburg and had a bus break down on them. So, uh, but they're surviving um, and Coach Supel's trying to get things established with running a new program and things like that. Uh, swim, we've got four meets left. Uh, they've been, they've started off pretty solid. Uh, that's a great place to go get out of the weather. It's nice and warm and cozy. The <laughs> problem I've seen with swim is you can't tell what kids what unless you, with all the hats and their caps on and everything. So uh, they, I think their last home one is this Saturday at three. Um, so they've got that going. Bowling's off to a pretty good start. They're ten and one. They've been at a couple tournaments, had some pretty good showing, second, third, maybe even fourth, and a few tournaments here and there. Uh, but both boys and girls are 10 and 1. Uh, boys basketball and girls basketball, they're kind of in the same boat. Uh, girls basketball is currently 3 and 9. Boys, they've won, I think, their last three. They're 5 and 7. Playing a lot of young kids. Um, the girls are playing a lot of freshmen. Um, boys are playing a lot of sophomores and juniors. So they're coming. Um, they're working at it. Um, it's, been, it's been good for me seeing a little bit more girls basketball and things like that. Uh, seeing them get out there and work hard. And, uh, Pretty excited about the future with some of the yard kids that they have. So, if you don't have any questions, that's pretty much what I have for you. All right, thank you, Thanks, Mr. Bassett. Mrs. Savage did steal the book. I'm oh, sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we will be taking a look at that data. Obviously, that's important to us once we get it. Um, we've already started looking at some of our past data. We pulled some special education mm -hmm. teachers together. And we've actually kind of looked at the past three years of data and where we fall in special education. Just how can we better serve? Not that we're doing anything wrong, there's nothing really striking about our data, but how can we better serve that population that continues to grow for us? Um, we want to make sure that we're serving those kids best. We're really digging into some of that data and looking at some, even some practices of other schools. Um, and how they're trying to make some gains with their special ed kids. Also, just quick, quick on testing, our plan is to test fourth grade and above online again like we did last year. It was the first year we took those uh, tests on a device. It went well. Um, the third grade, we're going to still stick with the old-fashioned paper and pencil. Um, for the little guys, it seems to work out well. We tested them that way in the third grade reading in the fall, and I think they're just much more comfortable with a, a pencil in the hand than they are pressing on a computer, but the older kids seem to to function quite fine with that. Thank you. Mr. Gord. All right, um, real quick. Again, just thank you again. I think I had a chance to be here in December. You guys exempt us from being here in December with a holiday again. On behalf of us, thank you for that time to be with our families on our vacation. Um, again, we continue to meet with our visioning teams. Again, there's 18 members of teachers and specialists that uh, are helping set the vision, again, of that new Brian Elementary building. Um, 
a lot of work going into streamlining processes. You know, we have four elementary buildings now, going to three next year. Uh, just really trying to work out some of these procedural things. Um, that way when we do move in that brand new building, it'll be less of a shock, so to speak, for them. Um, so we're busy now trying to, as we prepare for, again, the new building this fall uh, with moving grades two and three from Lincoln to the old high school, we'll consider that the old high school then, uh, and also grades four and five out here, taking them to the old high school. So uh, Karen and I are busy uh, working on with that visioning team as far as what room am I going to have next year at the old high school? Uh, what's the bell schedule going to look like? Again, we share staff still. Uh, are we going to continue to share staff? What does that look like? So we're trying to answer a lot of those questions uh, with that visioning team, and uh, we're going to start kind of on sharing some of that information with them. Pray that I get a fraction of the passion, of the courage, of this, of of, of the dedication you put into being president. Uh, as you did last year. So thank you very much for your service last year. Thank you and the rest of the board. Uh, with that, uh, we do have a need to go into executive session under item A, appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee or the investigation of charges or complaints against an employee, official, licensee, or student. Uh, so I'd be willing to accept a motion. So moved. Tom? A second. Sandra? Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Sindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. I don't expect anything. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. 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 Yeah.